Right, hello everybody and welcome to my first vlog. Um, so this this vlog is supposed to be based on our This I Believe statement, so kind of talking about our, <clears throat> our teaching philosophies. So for me, the biggest thing, the biggest thing I believe about teaching is that teaching truly is a relationship-based practice. I don't think, I don't think you can be a good teacher if you're not truly putting the most you have into the relationships that you're building, whether those be relationships between you and your students or you and your co-teachers, whether it be uh, English language learner or special education co-teachers, as well as the other teachers in your department and your administrators. All of those relationships are going to be important and playing a really big part in your success as a teacher, but more importantly, the, su the success of your students. So if you don't put the time and effort into those relationships, then you're going to fail because I know as a student, the teachers that I always liked best, but not only that I liked best, I thought they were the most effective at teaching me, were the ones who were interested in me as a person, not just as me as a student. So they were uh, first and foremost interested in my learning, but they were the ones who would come to my baseball games or offer to help out with student council, things like that. Um, so you really have to put time and effort into those relationships. Uh, a second big tentpole for me with uh, what I believe about teaching is uh, I think as a teacher, you have to embrace diversity. For me personally, I come from a very diverse uh, school, or excuse me, a three very diverse schools from ele elementary, middle to high school, all of which were <coughs> uh, where uh, white people were the minority. So I had a, a great opportunity to get to know different cultures and things like that. And I really think that augmented my education because I wasn't just focusing on content that might not have anything to do with, uh, <coughs> with anything I ever knew. But when I heard, when I was learning in history classes about Latin American revolutions and things like that, I knew people who had parents or grandparents who were uh, lived through things like the Mexican Revolution and things like that. Uh, so that was very, very uh, cool for me. So I think as a teacher, it's important to look at your class and notice the diversity. It doesn't have to be racial diversity, the way racial or ethnic diversity, the way it was in my school. Even more here in Southwest Virginia, socioeconomic diversity uh, is a huge, huge one because, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, not only is that going to help your students uh, to learn better, to be more engaged, but it's also going to help you to cater your teaching styles to uh, what your students need. For example, if uh, if you have a student who has to take care of their uh, younger siblings after school, you can't assign that kid a million times more homework because he's just not going to be able to do it because he's taking care of his younger siblings and such. Uh, so uh, things like that, or if they have to work to be able to support their family, things like that, you have to be aware of that, and uh, that has to be able to influence your what you give for work, uh, your discipline, things like that. If a kid was up all night because he had to work, you shouldn't be, and maybe he like doses off in class, you shouldn't be screaming at him, yelling at him uh, that he needs to be awake in class because there's a very good reason that he's not awake. Uh, so you as a teacher have to be able to take all of those different things into consideration. Uh, and that's one of the big reasons why embracing, uh, <coughs> excuse me, why embracing it, uh, diversity is very important to me. Uh, also, one of the biggest, biggest things for me is that as a teacher, I think you should push kids outside their comfort zone. I think, I don't think we learn if we're not uncomfortable. If we're comfortable with something, that means we already know it well enough. I think <clears throat> if they're, if students are, they should be comfortable, but safe. So you shouldn't be making a, a classroom environment where nobody ever wants to come to your class because they're that uncomfortable. But I do think you should push them to have conversations that make them a little bit uncomfortable because that's how they're going to learn better. If uh, you're never going to be able to truly learn something on something that makes you a little bit uncomfortable, whether that be a modern political issue or a historical event, something like that, because you're just going to be set in your way if you are comfortable. But once a teacher can push you outside that comfort zone, uh, then you're actually going to, <clears throat> excuse me, then you're going to start to learn a little bit better. It's going to stick with you better than if it's just something that like, oh, like I already feel really comfortable with this topic and here's like two more pieces of information to put on top of that. I don't think that's really gonna stick with students the way something uh, that makes them a little bit uncomfortable is. Um, so the last little piece of my this I believe that I wanted to talk about is the idea that high expectations truly have to be applied to every single student to help them to 
IT. Uh, my dad has been a principal for 20 years now. And one of the first years that he became principal at the school that he's principal of right now, he changed the school motto to high expectations of the, are the foundation of our success. And I really, not just because I've brought up with, been brought up with that saying, but I really do think that is how every single teacher should teach their class. Because if you set your, uh, if you set your goals at a mid-level range and then you all, uh, <clears throat> and then some of your students meet them and some don't, uh, then I don't think that's really helping anyone because uh, likely a lot of those probably could have met those middle range goals and not. But when you push kids to get to that higher expectation, when you have, uh, <clears throat> say you have a class of 20 students and 10 of them reach those high expectations, then uh, those 10 are going to serve as an excuse me, serve as an example to those other 10 to be able to say like, hey, I thought this was impossible at the beginning of the year, but I just saw these 10 other people who are no different than me uh, reach that goal. So now I can reach that goal. And I think <clears throat> the more we lower our expectations, the less our students are going to be motivated uh, to meet those expectations. This kind of goes back to that first point I had about relationship-based education. Uh, if we have good student, we have good relationships with our students and they like us, they're going to want to do things uh, that are going to make us proud of them. They want uh, <clears throat> so if we say, hey, I think you can do this, I think you can reach this very high expectation, uh, then they're going to want to do that because they're going to want to make sure that they can do that uh, <clears throat> because we believe in them. So that is kind of my this, I believe, for my, uh, for my ideas about teaching. Uh, leave any comments if you have any questions. I don't really know how to end a vlog, but here you go.